Okay, so I know I said I wasn't going to do any movie reviews unless it was a movie that I felt very strongly about. However, I watched this one a couple months ago and I took a lot of notes. So I'm going to follow through and today we're going to talk about Murder Secret. Murder Secret is aka The Broken Mirror, aka Don't Be Afraid of Aunt Martha. The reason I clicked on it is because of the title, Don't Be Afraid of Aunt Martha. And also, 80s Jolly just really, they lure me in. I don't, I don't know why. So I clicked on it. Oh yes, before we go any further, this video will have spoilers. I hope you've seen it. You probably haven't. It doesn't seem to be very popular, but proceed at your own risk. Okay, murder secret. We're gonna call it Aunt Martha. Aunt Martha was released in 1988. Oh, hey, my birth year. And it was directed by Mario Bianchi, who has also directed like a ton of other stuff, like over 100 movies. I don't think I've ever seen anything of his. I don't know. Y'all let a hoe know. Uh, he did direct Tragic Ceremony, which has been on my watch list, and Satan's Baby Doll, which is a great title. So here's the summary that you'll find on a lot of websites online. A family of four makes a long drive to Aunt Martha's house to visit her for the first time in years. Only she isn't there. Just the caretaker and his message that she will appear the next day if they survive the night. Oh, and another draw for this film is that it has Fulci's name on it. But he was not the director. It appears that he was perhaps the producer, and some sources say he was a supervisor of some sort. Uh, some people say the supervisor of the gore. I don't know. So Fulci was involved. Okay, so I watched a really bad dub. Really bad, but I also kind of loved it because... I think I'm starting to like bad dubs. The lead guy in this movie, he's a super, super famous actor. I don't know if I've seen him in anything, but I loved him. His name's Richard. This is really the only name that we're going to need to know from this cast. So, Richard. So the movie starts off, this family of four, they are driving through the country to go visit Aunt Martha in her cottage. When he was a little boy, Richard saw Aunt Martha get taken away and get locked up in a mental facility. And he hasn't seen her since then. Apparently she's been in this facility for 30 years and now she's out and now she wants to visit. On the drive over there we get like a little flashback up in Richard's head of a conversation he had with his mom. Mom was like, there's something terrible I have to tell you about Aunt Martha. And she tells him, we don't get to hear. And then she, she jumps out the window and kills herself. Okay. Now, we're back in the car with the family. And we almost get in a car accident. Like, swerve off the road, but everything's okay. So they continue. So when they get to the cottage, they meet the caretaker. His name is Thomas. And Thomas shows him around. But he said, oh, Martha's not here yet. She won't be here until tomorrow. And the family's just like, okay, whatever, cool. All right, so in this family... We have Richard, and we have the mom, which she's she's pretty cool too. And then we have a teenage daughter and a little boy son, who is like the worst actor ever. It drives me crazy. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure his voice is dubbed by an adult woman, which is funny. There's another son. He's a grown son, and he has plans to maybe possibly join them at the cottage later. So let's talk about like the feel of this this movie and the setting. So one of the first things I noticed was the car. It just it was just so cramped. Like, they were all just packed in there. And then the house itself is pretty cramped. It's kind of small. It feels like closed in, which I know a lot of the Jolly have very expansive interiors, much more luxurious. So this is a, an interesting contrast. Like I love a glamorous, luxurious Jolly, but I also love a rural Jolly, and that's what we have here. Just way out in the middle of nowhere, modest interiors. It has a nice isolating feeling to it. A little bit of discomfort with how tight the quarters are. Now there's a lot that's weird about this movie, which we'll get into, but one of the first things is that the, the grown-up son, he does arrive at the cottage at 3 a.m. only to leave at sunrise. 
why we don't know so the next morning we learned that ooh, actually aunt martha isn't going to be able to make it today either but she'll be here tomorrow so the family has a whole other day here at the cottage but instead they just cut immediately t tonight like cut directly to the moon in the sky who knows how they spent that day we'll never know <laughs> and then the next scene is the daughter. She's going into a closet in the room she's staying in and like trying on old lady clothes from the closet. And she keeps making these noises. I don't understand. She keeps making these little like soft moaning noises like mm, mm, mm. constantly. I'm not sure what that is. So the first 40 minutes of this movie is like the setup, them setting the scene and nothing is happening. Many reviewers have mentioned that most of the kills happen right at the very end of the movie, like the last few minutes of the movie. So we kind of have this like waiting room vibe to this movie. It literally feels like we're just sitting in this tiny house waiting for something to happen. And it's not that I didn't like the, the anticipation, like when is Aunt Martha going to show up? Like I was interested. Let's talk about the soundtrack to this movie. The soundtrack was awesome. It was very 80s. It kind of sounded like a video game soundtrack. It was very haunting, but I really loved it. Okay, yeah, so 40 minutes in, we do finally get some bloodshed. The older son, who we barely got to know or see in daylight, uh, he's dead. And he is hanging from a tree or something upside down, and there's just a lot of blood. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention about this movie is we have, I should really have a name for this, we have what I call like creeping scenes, like creeping in the dark, exploring in the dark, like investigating that noise and sneaking around in the dark. And they just, we just have these extended scenes of that. And I personally grow very weary of that very quickly. Sometimes it's necessary to like the mood or whatever, but these were just, it's like it was filler. <laughs> When the son first comes into the house, he's creeping. Uh, when Richard hears a sound outside, he's creeping for a long time. Little boy gets up in the middle of the night and is creeping to go look at the TV, you know, for a little poltergeist moment. I don't mean to be impatient, but sometimes I'm like, why are we watching you walk the entire length of the hallway as slow as you can possibly go? Okay, it is now the second morning at Aunt Martha's cottage. The daughter, I don't even know her name because it doesn't matter. Daughter gets up and sees there has been a date written on the mirror in lipstick. She asks her dad, like, what, it, what happened on this date? And then dad clearly knows. It was clearly the date Martha got locked up, but he doesn't say that. Another thing about this film is it has very, like, weird transitions. I think that kind of goes hand in hand with the weird pacing. So there's, like, weird pacing and then weird transitions. So like I mentioned earlier, the first morning when they learn that Aunt Martha won't be here, they just cut tonight and then the second morning they're talking about aunt martha will probably be here by lunch and then they just cut to some other random point in the day we don't know if it's after lunchtime if it's still before lunchtime like it's just it's weird there's some abrupt transitions here <laughs> okay now let's talk about the daughter so the first time i watched this movie this is the note that i typed out the teenage daughter is always making little noises like little moans and the nude scenes are a little much but i mean i guess she's 18 or whatever i hope so in preparation for this video i did go read a lot of reviews and that's to make sure i understood the movie to be honest because there's not a wikipedia page for this movie anyway so i read a bunch of reviews and i uncovered that of course the actor was of age but the character she's playing is 15 and so a lot of people were not sure how they should feel about these shower scenes and whatnot. <laughs> Another thing that I couldn't help but wonder about, okay, so this girl's in the shower taking a sexy shower, you know, and her little brother comes in to bother her and I'm like, this boy, he's like, I don't know, six, is he in there with this naked actor because I don't know it looks like he's literally in there like with her I don't really know how all that kind of stuff works like if there's a, <laughs> a nude scene but there are also kids okay I'm gonna stop talking okay anyway so sexy shower uh, unfortunately gets interrupted because the killer comes in and attacks the daughter and she actually gets stabbed in the head which 
is out. And, and it's good. It's a good scene. Like, there's a lot of blood and stuff. Like, it's cool. 55 minutes in is the most shocking part of this film. This is probably the moment that really made the film noteworthy enough for me to even talk about today. They decapitate the child with a chainsaw. They decapitate the six-year-old boy with a chainsaw. His head falls off and rolls along the floor. They really did that, you know? I mean, I appreciate them pushing the boundaries. I just don't, I just don't think we show that stuff in America, right? When I saw this, I was like, what the? Like, out loud. It just came out of my mouth. Okay, so I guess we're at the climax or whatever. So the dad, after some weirdness, he finds out that Aunt Martha f has been out for a while. Thomas is not really the caretaker. There is no caretaker. And there are some ready-made graves on the property with all of his family's names on it. So he gets a lot of information at once. Meanwhile, mom is upstairs when, sadly, the killer grabs her. The killer shuts her head in a wooden trunk and decapitates her. And Richard doesn't make it home fast enough. He comes home to find his entire dead family seated at the dinner table. This is just like a very 80s moment, I think. It reminds me of, I want to say happy birthday to me, but I'm not sure if that's actually the movie I'm thinking of. Super 80s and super cheesy. Here's Aunt Martha. She's here now. She's in the kitchen with Richard. She's mad at him for leaving her locked up. The reason Aunt Martha was locked up is because Richard's mom had her committed because Richard's mom wanted Martha's money. So that's why Martha is super mad. But she said she did not kill these people. Anyway, so then Aunt Martha disappears. She just disappears. And Richard goes into the basement. He sees that Aunt Martha's dead down there and she's been dead because she's eaten up with maggots, which is actually pretty cool, beautiful, like I'm sure Fulci was involved in that, or really cool, well done. And now in the basement, we reveal the murderer. It's the caretaker, Thomas. I bet you didn't see that coming, did you? You know how a lot of Jolly, they'll have the whole speech at the end that explains everything and how the killer did everything? Well, we get a big long speech at the end of this movie and Thomas is talking to Martha, explaining why he did everything on her behalf. However, I don't know who Thomas is. Like, who is this guy? Is he Martha's boyfriend? We don't know. He's just a random person. Okay, then Richard and Thomas get into a manly fist fight. A really long, really long Jalo fist fight. It goes on forever. I think in addition to creeping scenes, I don't really like extended fist fight scenes. <laughs> anyway, just as Thomas is about to deliver that finishing blow, we suddenly transition back, back to the beginning. Do you remember when we almost got in that car accident, but we missed it? Well, it turns out we did get in that car accident and everyone's dead except for Richard. And that's the end. So I'm like, so did that not happen? Did none of that happen? Did I just watch a movie of a bunch of stuff that never happened? I hate April Fool's Day. And do you know why I hate April Fool's Day? Because none of it happened. It was a joke. Is it even a horror movie? Is it even a horror movie if the stuff didn't even have, if it was all in the person's head or if it was all a joke or it was all pretend or it was all a dream? That kind of kills a movie for me if it's one of those kinds of plot lines. <laughs> April Fool's Day made me so mad. And I think Aunt Martha just left me dumbfounded. And I'm like, I'm not sure what like, is this Richard's dream? Is, it, is this Richard's guilt? Is it like a guilt nightmare? Or is this Aunt Martha's fantasy? It is kind of interesting to think in terms of like alternate timelines, right? So if they hadn't gotten in the wreck, they would have gone to the cottage and all that stuff would have happened. But they bypassed all of it because they did get in the wreck. So they all still met an untimely fate, but perhaps a little better than what they would have at the hands of Martha. I don't know. I do like alternate timelines, so that was kind of fun to think about. Let's just wrap this up with a few pros and cons. The low budget vibe here in the bad dub and the like awkward dialogue, I think are charming 
and entertainingly bad. The soundtrack was awesome. The gore was super fun. The story, it seemed like it was going to be promising, but it kind of flopped, I think, ultimately for me. I don't know. I think I'm just a little bitter about the none of this ever even happened thing. And the pacing, it just, it kind of just felt like they were stalling us. I was growing impatient. I liked the cast. I liked everybody. I just didn't like that little boy, but good child actors are hard to find. <laughs> Ultimately, I feel lots of ways about this movie. I think the fact that it doesn't even have a Wikipedia article or anything, it just feels kind of obscure. It feels kind of hidden, which always, you know, piques my interest. And it's really not that bad for what it is. I think it's fun. Uh, the kills are very cool and even though all the dead bodies sitting up at the table is kind of something we've all seen before, I, I still thought that was pretty fun. This movie isn't my favorite by any means and it did make me a little mad, but I don't hate it. I'm, I'm not mad that I've ever watched it. In fact, I've watched it twice now. I would say this movie is very cheesy, slightly confusing, not really scary in any way but very memorable. Why is it memorable? The main three things I think of when I think of this movie are the rural setting, the child decapitation, and uh, that twist ending. I don't even want to call it a twist. That is all I have to say about Don't Be Afraid of Aunt Martha, aka Murder Secret, aka The Broken Mirror, which there's never even a broken mirror in that movie, so I... Okay, whatever. Anyway, have you seen it? If you haven't seen it, do you want to or are you good? You know how this goes. Like a lot of us don't really have someone to talk about these movies with. So I just wanted to make this video. If you've seen it, please <laughs> let her <it home> know. <laughs> I can't stop saying that. I just love it. If you've seen it, feel free to tell me what your thoughts are. Yeah, I'm going to get into reviewing movies that I really, really love or really, really hate in the future, I think, or those that you specifically request. I hope this one is somewhat enjoyable. And that's all for today. Ciao!